There are over 6,500 languages in the world. Many do not have a word for yes or no. But they all have a word for why. Because languages reflect what is naturally inside a person. And inside every person is the question, why? We are naturally curious. We need to know. Little children begin asking why when they first learn to talk. So, it's a paradox. If we are naturally curious, then science should be easy. Science is just being curious and asking why. Two things that we do naturally. But most people think that science is difficult. They think people involved in science are particularly intelligent. You will read about a young person at a science fair, and they will be described as a genius or a protege. I remember a headline once about a girl from Canada going to compete at the International Science and Engineering Fair in Los Angeles. The newspaper headline read, a girl genius goes to Hollywood. But it isn't true. These kids are doing something that comes naturally to every one of us. They are just being curious. Curiosity is natural. These kids are just being curious and asking why. Then, they're doing something with the answer. Simple. Store-bought spaghetti sauce goes bad very quickly if it's not refrigerated. But there was a girl in Ontario who was visiting her grandmother. And she noticed that her grandmother made a spaghetti sauce that could be left out on the counter all week without going bad. She asked herself, why? She checked it out and found that her grandmother actually uses an ingredient that kills bacteria. Then, she did something. She wondered whether this ingredient could be used to kill bacteria in contaminated water. If it did, then it could be used to purify water in developing countries. She tested it, and it worked. It actually purifies water and makes it safe to drink. She asked why, and then she did something. Easy. So, science protege, girl genius, whiz kid. These are all of the phrases I have heard in the media when describing students who are involved in science. But these terms are misleading and frankly, unfortunate. The 15 minutes of fame one student will get for being called a genius can probably turn away 15 other students that may have gotten involved in science but didn't because they thought you had to be a genius. But if you leave here today with just one message, listen to this one. I have competed in science fairs and I have judged science fairs and I can tell you that there are no geniuses in these science fairs. In science fairs, there are a lot of young people full of enthusiasm, just like you, that found something that bothered them. Then they simply asked themselves why and they ran with it. With the natural curiosity you are born with, and enthusiasm, science is easy. But how easy? Well, NASA had a science problem a few years ago. So follow the line with me, starting from the launch point on Earth near the sun. NASA wanted to send a spacecraft, Cassini, to fly from Earth around the sun twice to gain speed, past Jupiter, and then orbit Saturn for seven years, collecting photographs and samples, and sending them back to Earth for analysis. The spacecraft needed electrical power for everything on board, from the probes, the instruments, the cameras, the controls, to last at least 10 years. But how could they make enough electricity to last 10 years? Batteries would never last that long. Plus, it would have to be very light and small. Whatever they use, it has to be simple and work for a long time. Oh yeah, and once it arrives at Saturn, these are the 155 planned orbits. You can see Saturn there in the middle. This is a difficult problem. There is a lot of electricity for a long time and a really long distance away. But NASA solved it. 
NASA got two dissimilar metal wires, joined them together at one end into a junction, and then heated that junction. That causes one wire, made of one metal, to give off electrons, and the other wire, made of a different metal, to accept the electrons. And that creates a flow of electrons from one wire to the other. That flow of electrons is called electricity. NASA created electricity using a thermocouple. It is small, light, reliable, and easily lasts 10 years or longer. But this is the interesting part. This really difficult problem was solved by NASA using something that is taught in grade seven. So either the kids in grade seven are doing the same science as NASA, or the science that NASA is doing is sometimes kid stuff. Or maybe science is just easy. The thermocouple was invented in the year 1821. That's almost 200 years ago. So science doesn't have to be something new. The first windmill was invented around the year 500 AD. It is a really old idea, but a really good one. Windmills now generate electricity and are called wind turbines, and I think they are beautiful. But the first wind turbine that I saw was idle on a windy day. That didn't make sense whatsoever. That bothered me. And that's important. Find something that bothers you, because then you ask why. I asked why. I found out that wind turbines will only cut in or start to turn to generate electricity in wind speeds that are around 14 kilometers per hour. But that's a really strong wind. Most winds are only half that speed. Therefore, most of the time, wind turbines sit idle. I did something. I designed new wind turbine blades, a lot of them, around 20 or so, because a lot of them didn't work. These are five of the blades that I designed. When I was in grade seven, I built a wind tunnel in my garage. And then in grade nine, I was lucky enough to use the wind tunnel at Trent University. In, all of the, in both of the wind tunnels, I performed smoke tests, measurements of the airflow, and computer modeling. You can see from the slides that science is very hands-on. One of my designs actually cut in at a wind speed of only three and a half kilometers per hour. Therefore, with this blade, wind turbines could be turning almost all of the time, generating clean, renewable energy. That would triple the amount of energy generated from a wind turbine. I learned a lot from doing my own hands-on research. I learned skills in computers, mathematics, report writing, setting goals, and more. These skills are valuable in all aspects of life not just science. One of the things I learned was never to take no or failure for an answer. Some of my blades didn't work, but I kept going. I also learned not to take yes or success for an answer. Yes answers lead to new questions, new possibilities. I mean, just because you score a goal in a soccer or hockey game doesn't mean you stop and claim you've won. You keep going. It's the same in science. So I kept going. I adapted this technology to aircraft wings, resulting in more lift for the airfoil so that the airplane would burn less fuel, significantly reducing the greenhouse gases emis gas emissions produced. This was easy, and I was having fun. So I kept going and designed a new electrochemical compound, kind of like a battery, that stores renewable energy and makes it available anytime, day or night, whether the wind turbine is turning or not. Storing renewable energy makes wind turbines even more relevant in today's environment. They're an important part of my and your future. Science is natural and easy. It's just learned as difficult. Imagine you walk into your phys ed class and you are going to learn how to throw this baseball. But you never get to hold the baseball. Instead, your phys ed teacher hands you this technical sheet of how to throw a baseball. 
it would be pretty difficult to learn how to throw a baseball this way. But we all know this is wrong. Sports are easy and fun. They're not difficult. In fact, they're natural. Just like asking why is natural. So, like baseball, science is hands-on. If you try it and do it, it's easy. And when it's easy, it's fun. If you want to find science easy, simple. Start acting like a two-year-old. They are constantly asking, why? Why? But, unlike a two-year-old, listen to the answer and then do something about it. There is one more thing you should do. Dream big. We all dream, but I was told that the power of a dream is not that you achieve it, but that it makes you move. It makes you do something, and you can do amazing things. We may be the leaders of tomorrow, but the biggest step that you can take right here, right now, is to start. Start small. Your dream may be big, but start small. I have a big dream of a sustainable planet. I would like to retrofit the world's 90,000 wind turbines with my blade design to triple the amount of energy generated. That is a big dream. But I started small. In my garage, using a wind tunnel that I built out of cardboard, rubber tubes, and ice cream containers. Each of you already has an inquisitive mind. And good science needs inquisitive minds. I urge you, awaken your natural curiosity and develop it. We need it. When we started today, we talked about how science was perceived as difficult. So difficult that anyone involved was called a genius or a whiz kid or a protege. To many, the name Albert Einstein defines genius. What he did in his lifetime was amazing. So it would be interesting to know what he said about his genius. Albert Einstein said, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. Or, put another way, he effectively said, I am not a genius. I am just naturally curious. I know how to ask why, and then do something about it. Just like each of you. <laughs>